Hello and welcome to Late Night Creations. I am so glad you're here today because I am participating in the 5 Under 5 Challenge and the theme is Fruit Tiered Tray. And if you've known me very long, you know that I have a strawberry collection in my kitchen. So this video is really fun for me. So let's get started. Okay, the first DIY, I'm going to make a rolling pin. I'm gonna use some scraps that I have in my craft room. It's a roll from some Cricut, I mean, from some uh, vinyl that I use with my Cricut, <clears throat> excuse me, and some of those little uh, dowel sticks that came from those sponge paint brushes. Now, I'm just going to measure it however long I want it. I did a couple measurements, decided on the one that I wanted. I'm just going to use this little saw that I picked up at Dollar Tree a long time ago, and it cuts right through this just like butter. It, it really just took me a few seconds to do it. And I was really careful. I didn't I didn't go really fast. It looks like it in here because I've sped the video up. But I just cut it and then I cut my little dowels. Oh, I did sand it a little bit to kind of make it smooth like the other end. And then I cut those little dowels the length that I wanted as well. Now I'm going to trace around the ends so we can close up the ends. I'm going to trace on just some regular old cardboard um, that came from an Amazon box, I'm sure, and then my X-Acto knife. Just cut them out the best I can, and you'll see that it works out perfectly. Just cut those out, and then I'm going to glue them inside the ends of those um, that roll. Now, I did kind of sand it to get it um, to fit. It didn't fit just right. Took the scissors, trimmed it down, sanded it a little more, just a little bit at a time until I got it to fit just snugly inside there. Perfect. I took a little bit of uh, wood glue that I got at Dollar Tree and I just put it all up inside there, stuck it down in there and voila, look, it's beautiful. Now I measured how long I wanted my little handles on my rolling pin and I measured them and you could use this but I didn't want to use that much elbow grease today so I got out my handy dandy little miter saw and it's so cute it's so tiny uh, my husband surprised me with this as a gift one time like most women ask for jewelry and I asked for power tools so this cut this through quickly and easily and I love it so I got this little spackling out from Dollar Tree and this is not necessary. I think it would look fine without it by the time you get it painted. But I'm a little extra, so I wanted to close up those little gaps. So I just put the speckling on, sanded it a little bit, then hot glued my little handles right on the ends. Yep, got to pick all that little extra glue off, you know. So put that glue on there, put one on each end, and got a little mini rolling pin. It's so cute, and it basically cost me nothing because it was stuff that it was it, this is a trash to treasure guys okay so then I'm going to paint the whole thing white I'm going to make it look wood grain there I'm going to roll it out show you that it's actually a working rolling pin okay I'm going to paint it white I had this paintbrush I'd used to paint something white earlier and put it in a plastic bag to keep it moist that's a, an awesome little hack you can use to not have to keep washing your paintbrushes because nobody that I know loves to wash paintbrushes. I'm gonna dry it with my heat tool. You can use a blow dryer. Then I'm gonna use the antique wax with that chippy brush and just give it a coat to make it look like wood grain. And if it's streaky, that's awesome because then it looks like wood grain. I can't get over how this actually does look like wood grain. Now, when you pick it up, it doesn't feel like wood, but look at that. Oh, it looks so cute. Now, I picked up these picks at Hobby Lobby last year on clearance in the spring section and didn't pay full price for them, obviously. I would never. And just cut the picks off. And I'm going to tie a little twine around one end and tie it in just a little knot, a little bow, something. And I can't even remember what I did now. Oh, yeah, I tied it up. And then I'm going to hot glue these little strawberries onto the twine so it kind of looks like they're dangling on the twine. And I think I, maybe I did put a bow on it. We'll see. It's been a minute since I created these. I thought I was going to put three, but I think I only did put two. Yes, I did a simple little twine bow and glued it to the top of those. And it turned out really, really cute. I love this thing. And so this is what it looks like. What do you guys think? Do you like that wood grain technique with the antique wax? 
the five under five challenge. You make five, at least five under five dollars each. And it's hosted by Emily from Farm Charm Chic and Misty from Crafty Cove DIY. Guest hosting this month is Charlotte from Crafting Up a Storm and they are all amazing crafters. Check them out. Their um, YouTube channels will be linked in the description box below as well as the playlist of, and you will be able to see everybody that is participating in this challenge this month. So let's jump into the next DIY. Okay, I've had these in my stash obviously since a Christmas, maybe a couple years ago, but I just, that that paper peeled off really easily on this one. It's got the sticky on it. I'm going to make this two-sided because on my tear tray, it's on my bar and you can walk on both sides of the bar and you can see both sides. So I cut some some um, decals out on my Cricut. If you don't have a Cricut, you can find all kinds of decals all over the place. I mean, um, stickers. I'm going to draw a strawberry on here. I have lots of experience drawing strawberries and painting strawberries, which you will see because I'm going to give you a little tour of my kitchen later in this video. And I just took some red paint. I guess I'm digging for red paint right now. Okay, there we go. There's the red paint. It's Crimson by Waverly, I think. And anyway, any red paint will work. Just paint some red, add some white to lighten it up, add a little brown, darken it where it needs to be dark. Lighter where the light hits it, darker where it's shaded. Uh, then paint the little stem green and add a little few gold dots or dark brown dots, whatever you want to do for the, the dots on the strawberry. And you have a beautiful little strawberry. And you can just make them plain. You don't even have to shade them. I have a lot of strawberries in my kitchen that are not shaded and they're just as cute. So if you want to paint strawberries, you don't have to do all this shading. And I didn't do a whole lot on this one as far as shading, I just, you know, put a little white in there, left it dark up there where the stem is going to be, and at the bottom where the, it would, there wouldn't be any light hitting it. I used a couple different greens to get the stem the color that I wanted it. I don't want to bore you with all the painting details. Um, you can find painting tutorials all over YouTube. That's not what this is. This is to inspire you to create some little things with fruity theme for your tear tray for summer. Now I'm going to leave mine up all year round because I have strawberries in my kitchen. I've had my strawberry collection since 1985. Yes, I've had the same decor in my kitchen. Well, not the same because it's it's evolved and changed over the years. A lot of people have given me things they found at garage sales or that they've just picked up and found because they know that I love strawberries. So I have quite the collection. You will see so stay tuned in this video if you want to see the crazy collection of strawberries that I have in my kitchen. So there are the little gold dots. I just used a, the end of a, it looks like a skewer, just whatever I had handy. And I'm just putting a few little gold dots on there. And I think the strawberry looks cute. We've got some fresh jam. So once this is all dry, I make sure that it's all dry. I'm going to flip it over and we're going to do the other side. Just going to do really simple. Um, my nickname is Gigi. My grandkids call me Gigi. All the kids at church call me Gigi. Their parents call me Gigi. Everybody calls me Gigi. So I'm going to put this fabric on top, you know, back in the days when we canned and took something to someone as a gift, we would put some pretty little fabric on top to make it look nicer. And so I'm trying to square this up and make it look cute. And so I put it on the top. I've had this strawberry fabric in my stash for years. I've been using it for different projects and I have a lot of it. I must have gotten a really good deal on it. And so I'm just gonna tie this twine around the top. I just sort of tied it in place to keep it in place. Then I'm gonna tie a knot right here, but I put a little twine bow right on the edge and then I'm gonna flip it over and put a, a simpler twine bow, just a shoestring bow on the back because it's a simpler look, if that makes sense. There, so this side, just get that little fabric all pleated and gathered just right and then on the back side I'm just going to do a simple shoestring bow because I felt like that side needed a bow too. Equal crafting opportunity something like that I don't know and there you go so adorable DIY super simple Got this DIY 
wax, what is it called? Wax, white wax from the Latina next door. She has a shop and you can get the stuff and it ships really fast. And so I just put it on one of these little terracotta pots I got from Dollar Tree. I wiped too much off and I still had a little in my brush. So I just wipe, I just brushed a little bit back on there and it turned out really good. So I just dry, it's almost like a dry brush of that wax. I kind of got a lot on there and wiped a little bit too much off. So just do it however you like so that it looks a little bit aged. Put a little styrofoam down in there. I had some scrap styrofoam from something, some packing, something. I never throw anything away. I'm going to glue a little Spanish moss to that styrofoam in the top. I thought I was going to use some of that greenery that's laying there. I ended up not using it. Here we go back to those little strawberry picks. And I did two DIYs with this, three DIYs with this, and still had some left over. So I'm just going to stick them in there, arrange them how I wanted. I cut some of the ends off of some of them to make them shorter and taller. So cute. Little piece of gingham, black and white gingham, buffalo check, whatever you want to call it. Ribbon to make a simple little bow. Didn't even make any loops. Just did this. I don't know what kind of bow this is called, but I love it. And I put it on the front. And simple, quick, easy, adorable. Okay, I'm warning you, if you get motion sick, skip through this part. I'm sorry, but this is my kitchen, my dining area. So I just spray painted these chargers from Dollar Tree. I got those plates at Hobby Lobby. People have given me a lot of these things. I've got some old canisters I use as planters. Just don't look at my dead plants, don't judge. I painted these little wooden hearts and baskets in 1987. Yes, I'm that old. I'm old. Don't judge my dead plants, please. I need to clean them out. Um, I got a scroll saw for Christmas back in the early 90s. This was my first project I cut out and painted, 1991. And then I have a friend who got this as a gift in 1979 from a friend. And in 1987, Charlotte gave that to me. Julie Lemons painted that for me. She's a good friend of mine and she's quite the artist. These are just random things that I've collected that have been gifts to me. Most of this has been given to me or I've painted. If you see something hand painted, I probably made it. A lot of these things, those candles came from Europe. Every time I travel, I try to pick up something strawberry from my travels. There's my grandbabies when they were little. That little boy graduates from high school this year. It's be still my heart. Um, that little basket my memo got me at a garage sale. Yes, she did. And then I have a couple little cookbooks that friends have given me. Julie Lemons painted that for me also. Julie Lemons painted that also. Julie Lemons is quite the artist and an awesome friend. Just random strawberry stuff. Lots of strawberry magnets that people have given me. Um, this was an advertisement for a real estate company. I put some strawberry ribbon on it. There's some more of that strawberry stuff I painted. A strawberry magnet from Hawaii. This one was from Czech Republic when I visited there. Lots of strawberries. Oh, yep, my husband and I, the caricature. That's hilarious. Little scissors. This came from Germany. I love that, one of my favorite pieces. Julie Lemons painted water paint, did watercolors on that. These little nuts. Walnuts and almonds, I think my kids did those when they were little. Some more of the 1987 crafting. That was early on in my strawberry decorating. So my grandkids uh, deemed these as their money banks. And one's empty. This cutting board I've had for years. My friend Virginia made me those. These, this is Polish pottery that came from Tuesday morning, not Poland. I do have Polish pottery from Poland, but those came from Tuesday morning cute little wind chime lots of lots of random stuff when I moved these had this had a green frame a gold it was didn't match I painted it black to match my cabinets a little above the window little decor piece I've had for years bird houses above I made that from a Dollar Tree sign canisters a little antique teapot it's hand painted that someone gave me from a garage sale um, then my sister-in-law gave me this hand-painted muffin tin. So cute. I made that at one of those ceramic places that you go and make your own ceramic decor. Ton, 
tons of pot holders and hand towels and all kinds of neat things. Tins. I do not keep my bread up there. <laughs> okay, the piece that started the whole collection. Home Interior, 1985. Yes, that started the whole thing. My little coffee hot cocoa bar with coffee mugs. There's my tear tray that will, in the end, you will see all the things that I made today in there. The kids' fruit snacks. Made this out of, uh, they were like little frappuccino something or others. And I have lots of strawberry placemats and I use them under my appliances in my kitchen. There you go. Sorry if you're motion sick now. Let's get on to the next DIY. Some more of my strawberry fabric. A couple of these little tags I got in a big box of different type tags at Christmas, after Christmas on clearance, um, Hobby Lobby probably. I'm just going to stick this fabric down in there and roughly kind of draw the shape. This, I should have done it on the back side. Hindsight 2020. Ended up having to measure, trace it out, and cut it. I don't know. I do things the most difficult way sometimes. Just don't do as I do. Do as I say. Put the, tra put the house down on there and trace it. That would have been the smartest thing to do. Anyway, I got it done, and it turned out cute. So I'm going to... Put some Mod Podge down and glue it in there. I'll make sure it fits first. I did do that. I'm going to put the Mod Podge. You know, I buy Mod Podge by the gallon. I've had my gallon for almost three years. And I just keep putting it in this small thing, small little container. And I'm going to put a pretty good thick coat on there. Put it down in there. I use a little squeegee tool that I have to smooth it all down. And it kind of smushes. That's a good word, right? It's a good crafting tool, crafting word smush all the glue in the fabric and then I'm going to put another coat right on top of that fabric. Mod Podge works really good with fabric. It doesn't wrinkle, doesn't bubble and there you go. It's nice and dry. I'm going to flip it over. I did two two-sided so that should count as seven DIYs and this these are under five dollars easily. I didn't tally up all the costs but you can tell by the things that I have that they're well under five dollars. This little house from Dollar Tree was a dollar twenty-five. This pack of tags was probably around. I think they are like five ninety-nine. I got them on clearance, and there's like twenty of them in there. So two dollars twenty. You figured you do the math. I don't do math. So I have this uh, these napkins that I bought. You know, I'm using one napkin out of twenty that cost me a few dollars. So here we go. I'm going to cut them out just haphazardly because the background's white. It's going to work good. Kind of place them on there to see how I want it. I'm going to use some Mod Podge. Now, the trick for me is to do a thin coat. A thin coat of Mod Podge. And then use a piece of plastic. I just cut open a Ziploc bag and then I use this brayer tool. Brayer tool. I'm not sure I'm saying that correct. But this trick really works. No bubbles and to lift that off very slowly. I've sped the video up so it looked like I did it fast, but I did it slowly. And very thin coats because this, this napkin is very thin and it will bubble and it will rip. I've had that happen before. I don't know what you could use in place of this tool. Maybe you could just use your fingers and rub it over that. Um, I think that probably would work. I'm trying not to get that napkin glued down to the sides because I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and cut that off shortly. My grandpa used to say directly. I kind of say that sometimes, but it makes me sound really Southern, which I am really Southern, so I'm not going to apologize for that. That's who I am. So here we are, all those beautiful strawberries. Aren't they so pretty on there? I, I love strawberries, y'all, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna act like it's not beautiful. It's beautiful to me. Whether anybody else thinks it's beautiful or not, you know, you can leave me a comment and agree with me. If you don't agree with me, that's okay. That's okay. We all have our own taste. But I think that those strawberries are beautiful on there. Now I'm going to do a very thin, light-handed. I'm not, I'm not rubbing very hard with that brush. Then I flip it over after it's dry, completely dry. And I'm going to decide that I want to paint this edge red. Should have taped it off because I ended up kind of making a mess. And where I'm rubbing that paint off the edges, I ended up sanding it. I didn't show it, but I ended up sanding that off so that it didn't have red blur on the sides. Okay, so I've got my little tags painted. I used a little bit of that Minwax paste that I love so much. 
and I put it on there. And the, and the vinyl will stick after I put that paste on there. Uh, this For some reason, this font did not want to work good with me this day, but I managed to piece it all back together. Some parts of it were really thin. Um, so I put welcome on one and berry patch on the other. I think these little tags turned out so cute. Um, and then I decided they were really stark. So I took a little white and just dry brushed right around the edges ever so slightly, but it made such a difference. I didn't even really do it much in the middle. If I did, it was very, very little. Just around the edges to kind of give it a little more dimension and make it pop a little bit more. Then I tied some uh, jute twine around the tops of the, through that hole. And I always use my masking tape trick to make it the ends um, not fray and twist it a little bit. And I see um, Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Design. She puts a little hot glue on hers and twists it. I think I'm going to try that trick sometime too because it would be a lot quicker than the masking tape trick. But if you need it to be long to go through something long, like I've done some blocks and things like that, the masking tape may work a little better. But I'm going to try the hot glue next time because I've seen her do that several times. Now this is a little hard with the masking tape on there to get it through. So I just use my needle nose pliers. As one of my one of my viewers said, um, her dad used to call it his extra fingers. I love that because that's exactly what it is for me. I say clients because I do hair as my day job and those are my clients. And so I may call you all my clients. You're not my clients. You're my friends. You're my viewers. You are definitely my friends. If you're hanging out with me long enough to watch me do a whole video, you are definitely my friend. So I'm going to glue this little greenery on top and I did a good job on the greenery today, guys. I am going to brag on myself because I usually stink at doing greenery and florals and all that, but I'm not going to lie. I love the way this turned out today. Now, you may say, what in the world is she talking about? This looks like who done it, but I don't care. I like it. I like how it turned out. It did take me a minute to figure it all out, but I did it and I think it turned out good. I really didn't have to show you all of this. I don't know why I didn't edit some of this out because this video ended up a lot longer than I actually wanted it to be, but I could have edited some of this out, but I'm really proud of how this turned out. So I just glued a bunch of this. Now this, um, Greenery, I got at Hobby Lobby when it was half price, and I bought a long garland of it. And I just cut off pieces that I need. You can see a little bit of that. That's probably one fifteenth of the garland that I have on the table right there. So here it is. And my video would not be complete if I didn't do a garland. I'm going to take this red Sharpie and I'm going to cover up that little toothpick part on the bottom of these strawberries. Then I'm going to glue two of them together so it'll be two-sided on the garland. And I'm going to pick all this stuff off because I'm a little pedantic about things like that. And I don't know why I didn't have my little silicone finger on because that hot glue was going through the little holes in the strawberries. So I got smart after a minute. Now I have this big needle that I'm going to use again. I love this to do garlands with and I'm going to use these beads and it takes me a minute to get myself organized because by the end of something I've got it figured out. Am I the only one that does that? Leave me a comment and tell me. Like after you've done one or two do you finally figure it out and you're like I wish I would have figured that out in the beginning. So I just did a pattern however I wanted it and I'm going to make a tassel. I'm just going to wrap it around my fingers however thick I want it and cut it off. And then, this is going to be hard to explain. Through that top loop, I'm going to use the end string from my garland. I'm going to tie a knot at the top of that loop that I wrapped around my fingers. And then I'm going to cut those strings off. Then I'm going to pull it down really tight. And then I'm going to tie a piece of string around the top to make that top knot loop thing at the top of the tassel. You see. You can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to take my lighter and burn that jute because that's what I love to do. I love the way it looks. I love the little dark pieces that it makes. Then I pull it really tight to get all those pieces the same length so I don't have to do a lot of trimming. 
Now, those that jute, because it's been rolled up, does kind of go crazy and stick out. And I kind of use my scissors like a like you do when you do curling ribbon and kind of make them go where I want them to. Just going to tie a knot in the other end of this, and it's done. And it turned out super cute. What do you think? What do you think about this garland? Should I have painted the, the, the beads or white or no? I love it natural. Then I did fray the end of this a little bit, just tw twisted it the wrong way and frayed it a little bit and then cut it off a little bit. But I think it turned out cute. Leave me a comment on these. Tell me which one was your favorite. Would you have done something different? What do you think? What do you think about my strawberry collection? <laughs> <laughs>